Hi, I'm Mike Linden. I'm a technical artist at SideFX and in the next 15 to 20 minutes I'll be showing you just a couple of different workflows uh, that we've we've basically developed over the last year or so using existing tools in order to help you get your data out of Houdini into your game engine quicker. So the first thing I'll be covering is uh, a fire workflow um, and this will cover a number of tools, the fire presets, make loop, pyro preview, as well as the texture sheets. And I'm also going to show you a couple of production examples of how those were used. And then lastly, I want to just look at fluids and how we can get fluids from Houdini into your game engine and also some things I did in order to get some custom data across. So if you're not familiar with the game development tool set, uh, it is a separate shelf available in Houdini um, that is downloadable from GitHub. It's completely free. Uh, you can actually download and install it directly from within Houdini as well. There's a, a button in the, the game shelf uh, that will download and install it and set it all up for you. Uh, there's three of us currently working on it. There's a bunch of tools there. I suggest you go and investigate, have a look at some of the others. I'll be showing just some of those in this video. So the first thing was, uh, I, I, we kind of hear this all the time from customers. I want to create a looping fire texture and get it in game as quickly as possible. And the reason for that is because traditionally doing some kind of simulation takes time. Uh, and often time is not something you have if you're working within a sprint in a game studio. I want to create something along the lines of this. Uh, there's a couple of things going on here. There are different size fires. Uh, I also wanted to be able to create different um, presets for that. I wanted it to be able to loop and I wanted it to look relatively realistic, both in the movement and also in the shading. So the first part of that is probably the thing that can often take the longest and that's getting to a good looking fire sim. And, you know, I want to get to, to that as well as be, be able to create different sizes. And that's where the presets come in. So essentially what we've done is we've taken all of the elements that make up a sim and we've wrapped it up into a single HDA. So initially you have your fire source. That's the thing that's going to inject your fuel or your temperature into the simulation. Then you've got the fire simulation itself with all of its numbers and parameters that need to be dialed in. And then finally the visualization of the fire, both in the viewport as well as in the material. And then once we've wrapped all of that up, uh, what we've also done is we've just exposed what we think are the most common important parameters to begin with. There's a lot of things to change and, and play around with when you start doing pyro simulations. And a lot of them, are useful, but maybe not to begin with. So what we're doing is just isolating and focusing down to a couple. And then as you become more comfortable, we, you can start playing with some of the others. And because we've now exposed these, these common parameters, the next step is to actually create a preset menu so that you can choose a different preset and see those parameters update to give you a better understanding of the relationship between these different settings. So the way you do that is you can just put down a fire pre presets node uh, in the object view. It's got a couple of different tabs for simulation, source, and visualization. And then at the top of the window, it's also got a presets menu with four different types. So in this case, I've chosen one meter wide low, hit play, and now it's going to sim. And this has been sped up slightly, but after a couple of minutes, I now have something which is, which is a good starting point. Uh, I'm happy with the size, the movement, and the shader in the background has also been set up. And if I want, I can then change that preset to say torch fire, hit play, sim again, and now I have something which is better suited to the size of say a torch flame. So it's pretty straightforward to use, um, and you can definitely dig into it to find out more about it. These are the four presets that we have at the moment. There's a one meter wide high and low fire. There's a torch flame and a candle flame that kind of looks like it's on steroids. And the idea is that each one is at a different size and, and kind of shape so that you can kind of pick which one matches whatever you're trying to do because each one does require slightly different settings. And when you play with your presets, you'll see kind of what's changing and, and get a sense of what needs to be modified if you wanted to say make a bigger fire or, or play with the stylization some way. 
The next step was that you want to be able to quickly iterate on the shader in your render view. And we hear this from customers all the time that rendering volumes can be quite slow. And that, that may be true, but I think if you're just trying to iterate and, and get a preview, uh, it is possible to get a pretty lightweight, quick render. So in order to do that, basically what we've done with the Pyro Preview ROP is it, it's just a wrapper for a standard Mantra ROP with settings specifically designed to help you render your volumes as quickly as possible. And to add to that, one of the other things that we found is that often users would be using an environment light to get some nice shaping and shading on their volumes, which looks really good, but I think when you're iterating can slow it down quite a bit because the environment light has to uh, shoot multiple rays from different directions. So we've created just a very lightweight rig to mimic what the environment light would do with six directional lights. It's much faster and cheaper, but should give you enough of an idea of what you're after before you then want to render with the environment light at production settings. So in this case, I would put down the Pyro Preview ROP, choose my camera, choose my object, and I can actually just render this directly in the scene view. And once it's loaded up, uh, it's now taking a couple of seconds in order to update each time I change the parameters. So now I can very quickly dial in my density. I can play with my color ramps. If I want, I can go a little bit more stylized as well. It just allows you that, that kind of ability to stay in flow while you're, you're trying to figure out what it is you want from the look of your shader. And by the way, the great thing is with the fire presets node, uh, the shader is already dialed in pretty well, but you're obviously more than welcome to go in and make those changes if you want to. The next thing is I want a seamless looping animation of my fire simulation. Um, this is pretty common for, for exporting to games. Uh, you generally want something that, that you can use over and over again. And this is kind of what it would look like straight out of the sim. You can clearly see the scene where we go from the end frame to the start frame of the 64 frame sequence. So that's the thing that I want to fix. And this has been around for a while, but it fits nicely within this workflow. We have something called the make loop node. So I can isolate my volume. Uh, and then once I have it, I can um, point it to the, the make loop node and hook up the start and the end frame. And then what it does is instead of it looping the images, it's able to actually blend the volume data underneath. Or if you're passing in geometry data, it'll blend the geometry data as well. And once you've done that, now we get something that looks like this. It's those same 64 frames, but now they're looping and we're blending the volume data. So the seam from beginning and end is, is almost imperceivable. And then once I've done all of this, the next thing I want to do is actually get it out to the game engine. And that's where the texture sheet drop comes in. At its most simple, the texture sheet drop will render a sequence and combine that into a sub UV texture sprite sheet, call it what you want. But it does actually have a bunch of other functionality which we added more recently. Uh, one of the things that it can do is if you're rendering out explosions or smoke is that it will generate normals for the volumes. But what we found is that that can be a little bit noisy sometimes. So what we've also added is the ability to add uh, an RGB light rig, which will based on your camera position, give you a uh, uh, top side and front lighting setup to kind of give you fake normal. So each direction matches a color. Uh, and then what you can do is you can actually blend between that and the, the normals that are rendered from the volume. And if you are doing something that involves some kind of combustion, uh, then you can also extract the emission from the smoke and the tool will normalize that value and put that into a separate channel within your texture. So now you can relight the smoke and have separate control over your fire. And then lastly, you can also do your own channel packing. So if you do want to choose to put different things in each channel, there's a simple drop down that lets you choose what's in your RGB and A channels. So you could have two channels for your normals, one for emission, one for alpha. You could uh, put a, a bunch of variations in different channels. It's really up to you. So in this case, what I did was once I was happy with that initial fire setup is I went back and I changed some of the source settings 
uh, just to give me a different seed so that I had roughly the same size and type of fire, but some variation in the movement. And once I'd done that two times, simmed it, rendered out, I then channel packed that into a single texture. So now I've got three variations in one texture. So that's the basic workflow, but that, that's very specific to just a ground fire. What if you've actually got a specific object in your game that you want to set on fire and you want to be able to use this fire presets node as well? Well, we actually did a demo for GDC called Brimstone uh, where we had a section that actually had a forest fire. So we needed a way to set these trees on fire. Uh, and, and this is where those tools come in. So the great thing is that the fire presets node by default will give you a source that you don't have to really think about. But if you want to, you can swap that out for pretty much anything, geometry points or a volume. And in this case, I'd already done my basic setup. All I did was changed out that input uh, and ran the sim again and rendered it out. I was still using the existing presets available to me because they already had the right kind of size that I was looking for. And this is what it actually looks like in the engine with the asset. So it's easy to add your own source. And of course, we can now reuse that existing node network instead of having to start from scratch. And of course, typical of production, later on before we actually released the demo, uh, we brought another artist on and he suggested that we add another tree asset. And of course, because I already had everything set up, it took me a couple of hours to just swap out that input asset run through the step, the, the process, and then I was back in the engine in order to create this. So that's fire. Let's uh, switch gears a little bit to, to fluids. Um, I wanted to add some fluid simulation to uh, the demo as well. But if you've ever tried to do fluids in a game engine, it can be a little tricky. You're often uh, limited by a number of constraints. And so I'm going to show you how we use the vertex animation textures to uh, basically get that fluid mesh out of Houdini and into your game. And it's one solution to this problem. In the Brimstone demo, there's actually a section where you drive through the inside of a volcano. This is a cave inside of that volcano. And what we wanted to do was not just have some lava flow, but actually have some lava splashing up against the side of the track as well as the stalagmites, which you can see in this video. And that's what I'm going to be showing now. So the first thing I needed to do was actually set up the, the fluid sim in Houdini. And I hadn't really touched fluids in a while. And I was a little nervous about having to deal with the presets and getting things looking just right. Um, but I kind of got lucky on this one. We actually have a shelf specifically for viscous fluids, which is what lava is. And as you can see in this image, there are some presets specifically for lava. So like I said, kind of got lucky on this one. But basically what I did was I created a simple collision object as a ramp to, to kind of funnel the, the fluid down as well as to collide against it. Once I'd created my fluid source, I could then use the lava from object preset. And what that does is it'll actually add viscosity to the sim specific to a lava type look. And the other thing that it did was it added temperature to control the look of the lava as it goes from white hot to kind of deep reds and blacks as it settles. And then it tracks that throughout the sim. And this was really easy for me to set up. There wasn't really much for me to do at this point other than just hit play and play around with my collision object to see the kind of shapes that I might, might get from the splash. So once I've got that simulation data, I now want to get it into the game engine. And for that, I use the vertex animation texture drop. Uh, there's a fluid export setting. I choose how many polygons I want. And then I hit export. And it will export a mesh as well as a texture, which will drive the position of that mesh. And once I've got that, I can then copy and paste this wall of text directly from the HDA into Unreal. And that'll give me the material node network that I'm after. And I can hook that up uh, to the, the inputs. Um, and now I've got a shader that will use the data that I've just exported so that I get something that looks like this. Now you'll notice that there's some shape uh, or some color and shading variations in this uh, lava. And I want to talk a little bit about how I went about doing that because I was using that existing setup but making a couple of tweaks along the way. 
So to understand how we export this data from Houdini into Unreal or any other game engine, I want to show you kind of what's happening under the hood. So this is the mesh that we export, which is basically just a cloud of triangles. And then we use a texture to move those triangles into position for each frame of the, the sequence, which is what gives us the, this illusion of a fluid simulation happening uh, over time. And it's great for that, but what it doesn't give me is persistent UVs over time. So I needed a way to add some shading and shaping to this without the access to UVs. One of the ways I could have done that was try planar projection, but I wanted to see if I could actually use vertex colors and export a texture which would drive those vertex colors for this. So I went back into Houdini and the first thing that I thought would really be helpful is to define the edges a little bit better, where there's some curvature in that fluid, kind of like a Fresnel effect. And there is a measure sop that you can basically put down and it will give you a value based on the curvature of the geometry. And then I map that to color. So what you see here is blue is where the surface is relatively flat. And then it kind of goes to this baby pink uh, as soon as the, the fluid starts becoming more curved. So that's something that I can then use to drive the shader on the, the real time side. The other thing that I thought might be worth uh, bringing across was I've already got the velocity from the fluid simulation. So if I convert that into a speed value, I can then map that to a color. And so what you're seeing here is as the, the fluid moves quickly, it's more of a blue. And then as it slows down, it goes into that baby pink. So it just gives me some variation uh, so I can kind of see the movement in that shape. And then lastly, I mentioned to you earlier that by default or by adding the lava preset, I'm actually able to track temperature through the, the lava. So I thought, why not? Let me do that as well. Uh, and then I've now got these three separate attributes. I've got curvature, speed and temperature. And then what I can do is the Versus Animation Textures ROP actually lets you choose any arbitrary attribute to export as a texture. So instead of using the default CD for color, uh, I created a custom attribute and I packed into the X, Y, and Z of that vector attribute, my curvature, my speed, and my temperature. And then some modifications to the material on the real time side gave me something like this. So instead of me having a flat emissive object, I was able to get something which had a little bit more interest in the, the shading based on, in this case, the curvature as well as the speed values. So those are just some of the tools that we've developed and I think can work nicely in conjunction with each other. Uh, the first was the Fire Presets HDA. This is pretty new. This is the first time we're actually uh, releasing it to the public. It's available in the GitHub uh, repo if you want to check it out. Uh, it is still in development, so if you've got any feedback, we'd love to hear it. And there's also the Make Loop node. It's been around for a while, but it's really helpful if you want to loop either your geometry sequences or your volume sequences. There's also the Pyro Preview ROP. So if you want to quickly iterate on your volume renders, uh, I would suggest checking this out. It can bring your renders down from a couple of minutes to a couple of seconds, which really will save a lot of time. There's also the Texture Sheets ROP, which has a number of functionalities. And if you're interested to learn more about this, we do have a separate video on the website specifically for it. I recommend you go and check it out to see what you can do with it for uh, various you know, pyro and explosions and fire setups. And then in this particular video, I showed one way to use the Vertex Animation Textures ROP, which is for fluids, um, but it does actually provide the ability to export rigid body dynamics, uh, soft body and cloth animations, as well as particle simulations. So if that's something you want to do, we also have a separate video for that on the website, which will go into more detail about those. Hope that was helpful. If you've got any feedback, we'd love to hear it. Thank you.